This was a simple case which demonstrates a successful U.S. guided aspiration of a lymph node. There are three signs of a successful aspiration. First, we can see the movement of the needle ventral to the nodule. The tip of the needle becomes visible. And third, when the needle in the right place is moved, the anterior wall of the lesion moves at one point. This is a papillary cancer with a maximal diameter of 5 mm. On aspiration the movement of the needle can be seen. While when the tip of needle became visible, it was doubtful whether the end of the needle was indeed inside the nodule. The tip of the needle is marked with yellow arrow. On the second attempt, it is less likely that we hit the nodule. Although the direction is correct, the intervention itself displaced the nodule and we failed to bring it into line during the puncture. There is a hypocoid nodule in the right lobe. We start with the aspiration but first the needle was outside the thyroid. After correcting the direction, the needle was clearly seen within the tumor. On slow motion, the right arrows show the inadequately positioned needle. Thereafter the yellow arrows point to the needle when it is within the lesion. The left thyroid lobe is demonstrated. There is a hypochoid nodule having echogenic foci in the left lobe. On aspiration, first we locate the nodule in the center of the field of vision. The first direction was not appropriate, but we had one modified the direction and now the needle is within clearly within the nodule. On slow motion, first the movement of the needle during the wrong direction, thereafter on the good direction. An U.S. guided aspiration of a parathyroid adenoma mark with yellow is demonstrated. Not only was the lesion deep, but the neck structures oscillated significantly according to the pulse wave. At first glance, sampling seems like a complete failure. Not only the end of the needle, but also the needle channel and the movement of the needle can hardly be seen. Significantly elevated washout parathyroid hormone levels confirmed that with great luck, but we managed to hit the lesion. First, we place the nodule in the center of the field of vision. Then start with the aspiration. The movement of the needle is clearly seen, as is the movement of the ventral wall of the nodule. This is not fully evident that the needle is within the lesion. On the second attempt, the success is more obvious, the needle is clearly within the nodule. We target the dorsal minimally hypochoic lesion. First, the duct, thereafter the tip of the needle within the lesion are clearly seen. We locate the nodule in the center of the field of vision and then start with the aspiration. Relatively great part of the needle is visible, first ventral to the nodule, then within the lesion. The second attempt was also successful. The tip of the needle is difficult to identify as it looks just like the microcalcifications. If somebody had doubt, the slow motion hopefully dispels doubts. There is a large cyst which occupies great part of the right lobe. First only the movement. Then even the needle became visible. The continuing shrinkage of the nodule is evident. However, at one point, the cyst starts refilling. Note the moving structure, the flow of the reflux fluid.
only 30 seconds after finishing the aspiration, the nodule has regrown. The source of this refilling is marked with yellow arrows. We demonstrate here the parallel aspiration technique when the needle advances along the long axis of the probe and is visualized from the skin puncture to the thyroid nodule, allowing the operator to observe needle penetration, location of distal tip, and the entire pathway of the needle. The procedure itself pushes the nodule lateral which makes difficult to hold the adequate direction. Nevertheless, based on the movement of the anterior wall of the lesion, we think we were in the lesion. This movement of the anterior wall is demonstrated on slow motion. This is a clear-cut situation, the needle is clearly within the lymph node. The success is questionable at this attempt. First the direction was wrong. After the correction of the angle, we failed to visualize the tip of the needle. On this occasion, much less gel was applied which impaired the visibility. Nevertheless, the movement of the ventral wall of the node is an indirect proof of a successful aspiration. Obviously, this is a successful targeting. First the movement then the tip of the needle within the lesion is clearly visible. We started the aspiration in an inadequate direction. After realizing this, we made some correction regarding the direction of the needle. At the end of the puncture, the needle is clearly seen within the medial part of the nodule. This was a simple case which demonstrates a successful U.S. guided aspiration of a lymph node. There are three signs of a successful aspiration. First, we can see the movement of the needle ventral to the nodule. The tip of the needle becomes visible. And third, when the needle in the right place is moved, the anterior wall of the lesion moves at one point. We present a left upper parathyroid adenoma which was located not only dorsal to the thyroid but also dorsal to the carotid artery. The position of the lesion was therefore challenging. First, we choose a position safe enough to avoid puncture of the artery. On the run of the needle, the aspiration could be successful. But this is by no means certain. The movement in the duct of the needle is presented on slow motion.